Hey there, welcome back to Overload. As you can see, we haven't really moved all that much. Uh, we're still here on the training mission. And still on trainee difficulty in the very first room of the game. Now that we've got everything set up the way we want it to look, we should set things up so that we can interact with it properly. So we're gonna hit escape again, go to the options menu, then hit control options. And now we've got a whole list of things we could do. We're just gonna worry about these four first. These are pretty basic navigation and combat options you can set. Auto leveling will snap you to either the floor or ceiling. These options all have to do with how far away from the floor or ceiling uh, you're rotated from that it will snap you back to and how fast it will do so. So a very high auto leveling will not wait to put you back on the floor or ceiling. It, it pretty much glues you to one of those two orientations. I typically fly with it off, but I have a ton of experience in these games. There is absolutely no shame in using this, especially when you're first getting your, uh, your space legs, I guess. Um, it's really helpful with navigation to know sort of where the floor and or ceiling are. Um, and then once you, once you get more confident in, in moving through levels and, you know, combat in, in space, uh, you can sort of dial that back to nothing, if you so desire. Aim assist is pretty obvious. This is recommended, I guess, for gamepad users? I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know how, like, I don't really... I don't use this. I, I'm a keyboard and mouse player. But if you feel like you're not hitting stuff and you should be, go for it. Vibration, I, I mean, if you have a vibrating peripheral, like a gamepad, then go ahead and turn that on. And then, obviously, you want to be using your mouse, but if for whatever reason you don't, as in, like, you know, you're taking your joystick and putting it on your mouse pad, or you have a uh, particularly angry cat, um, I guess you could turn that off, and then, I mean, you can still use the mouse in the menus, but um, in the game, obviously, you can't. So with these four options down, let's go ahead and take a look at mouse and keyboard options. We're going to work through all of these before setting up any kind of control scheme that's coming soon, don't worry. Mouse smoothing basically interpolates your mouse input. And if you like that kind of thing, go for it. There's several settings here, it re it's really just how many frames do you want to interpolate across. I don't fly with it, but if you like a much more smooth control experience, by all means. Mouse limiting is a little bit strange to describe, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best. So mouse limiting, um, now that I've given it a couple of seconds of thought, mouse limiting basically takes your mouse inputs and throws them out sometimes. This is a very controversial feature. Strong and very strong, depending on your mouse sensitivity, is the closest to emulating the Descent series that you're going to get. Uh, here's a couple of videos of, of what each of these do. So here's very weak. And then weak. And then normal. And then strong. And lastly, very strong. I fly with it off. I'm, I, I love the uncapped turn speed. It's very nice. There is a, there is a hard limit to how fast you can turn, ish. It's sort of, it's, it's sort of like out there somewhere, not really talked about. It's just not a practical limit to, to discuss. However, in, in terms of controlling the ship, it may be worth exploring these. If you're a Descent veteran and you're just picking up a, a, a six degree of freedom shooter for the first time in 20 years, it might be helpful to have it on. If you have a giant mouse pad and really like getting an arm workout with your, you know, 500 gram mouse, put it on <laughs> strong, I guess, I don't know. So most people know what invert, invert mouse Y is, but this is related to your pitch controls. So the nose of your ship going up and down. The Descent series is what got myself and many other pilots, most likely, into inverting their mouse for uh, a lot of other shooters. It's an old holdover from the uh, heyday of flight sims, is my understanding. So with this invert mouse Y on, means that if you pull your mouse back, it's like grabbing someone's head and pulling it back. 
and they're going to be looking up. So as I pull my mouse back, I look up. And if I push my mouse forward, I'm going to do nose down. I'll be looking down. I'll be pitching down. I'll be, you know. So X and Y sensitivity are pretty obvious. Um, I, you could check out some of my other videos floating around on here and on Twitch. Uh, anything older than, I want to say, March of 2018-ish? No. April of 2018, so not much on here at the moment. Um, but someday. So, my, these settings right now, 36, 36 even, are on a Zowie FK2 at 800 DPI. These are great for me. I can snap to targets. There's a little bit of overcorrection. You know, you've really got to dial it in and keep dialing it in because of how fluid everything is. But if you're if you can do that, you're you're pretty well golden. I previously had a wheel mouse optical 1.1a at 400 DPI. I had this dialed way the hell out to 87. So mix and match, pick and choose, do whatever feels great. But sensitivity and the mouse limiting are two things that work in tandem so if your sensitivity is super high but your mouse limiting is ultra strong you're gonna have a weird wonky ass time flying around if your sensitivity is way low but the mouse limiting is off you're gonna be turning nice and fast ish if you move your mouse super fast that's the best explanation i can give you so mouse rolling is the next one down this works sort of in tandem well, not really in tandem, but it's it's the it's sort of counterbalanced against auto leveling. As you turn, you can have the option to roll with the turn, so that you don't have to roll quite as much. This comes in three flavors: weak, normal, and strong. Now, if you're a descent veteran, you might put it on strong, along with strong, you know, mouse smoothing. Um, Depend mouse smoothing and mouse limiting. And that is supposedly a pretty good emulation of uh, the Descent, the first two Descent games. You also have an option for your mouse axes to do all kinds of different fun things. And these should be kind of self-explanatory if you think about it for more than a second. So turning um, and pitch controls are what I have it on. They're, on. they're what most people have them on. But you have the option to have it set so that if, you know, you go you go left and right on the mouse, uh, you're rolling left and right as well. Or, you know, you can uh, you can have the forward and back on the mouse be forward and back um, with the ship, which is tremendously awkward, but, I mean, if it works for you, it works for you. You can also have it, you know, set to slide up and down. So, like, if, if you set mouse X and Y to slide left, right, up, down, you can basically make a screen or do a box dodge, as it's known, just by moving the mouse instead of doing, you know, W, A, S, D, whatever your pitch controls are, etc., etc. That is sort of a segue, though, into the next section, which is where we remap the mouse and keyboard. So, let's check out the remap mouse keyboard page is... Because there are two pages to this. Really, these should these are your movement controls. It is very important to have all of these bound, except the ones that are being controlled by things not on your keyboard. So, like we just looked at the mouse motion X, Y, that's how I handle turn pitch. So I don't have to worry about these top four controls here. If you have, you know, X to be roll, you're going to definitely... Well, not definitely. You're just going to ignore these unless you want extra roll controls, which maybe you do. I mean, you've got plenty of binds you can do here. This is just my setup. It works great for me. Slide up and down on my left and right click is really strange, I know, but it works good. Then we get into some interesting controls here. Roll left and right 90. Roll left and right are fine controls. So like the longer you hold Q and E or whatever your buttons are, the further you roll. But you can have the option to snap 90 degrees very quickly. But typically, in most control setups, you're going to be giving up the ability to have fine roll control. So that's up to you. Um, roll left and right 90 is pretty helpful as you sort of get your space legs, as I've mentioned before. If you're having trouble with fine roll control and don't really want to think about it too much, turn on strong auto lev and then bind your roll keys, so Q and E for me, to these roll left and right 90s. You can be on the floor or the ceiling in two key presses. It's very simple. 
Um, maybe you like it like that as well once you're practiced. I don't know. Then, you know, there's the obvious fire primary and secondary. These are your lasers and gun things. These are your missiles and bomb things. You, you get the idea. Switch primary and secondary. Those are basically your scroll wheels, typically. I don't have these bound. That's that's the next page, as you'll see. Um, but if you want your scroll wheel moving up to be primaries and down to be secondaries, be my guest. If you want to mash the V key to you know switch your secondary to the next one down in the list, go for that. Next up is firing a flare. Uh, often you'll come across pretty dark areas in the game. You'll want to see those. Fire a flare. It's great. They're, they work good. Boost, engage your afterburner with this button. You have to hold it, there's no boost toggle. It's all a headlight, pretty self-explanatory. They're like flares, but it costs energy all the time. Um, there, is a, there is an upgrade to take that cost away, however. Your map, very easy to get lost in here. Good to have a map. Lastly, the hollow guide. If you are a descent or other six degree of freedom shooter veteran, you may be familiar with the guide bot. The hollow guide key is very important to have bound know what this key is it's really super important this key sends out the hollow guide it will order the your hollow guide to go to its next objective and in challenge mode this button allows you to switch between the two upgrades that you're awarded every certain number of kills i'll get more on, more in depth with that in a later video if you hold the button it brings up a radio menu you can use to give the hollow guide different orders um, similar to Descent 3's GuideBot menu, except it's a radial menu. It's very nice. It fits very well in with the UI. You use your mouse to navigate it and then select an option to, uh, and then select an option by letting go of the uh, key you have held. So that about wraps it up for this one. We're going to go on to additional controls next. I know this video is getting a little long, but bear with me. The Smash Attack is a special like melee ramming move you can do with your ship um you'll boost up to an enemy and deal damage to it um a lot of folks enjoy it i have it unbound because i don't want to ever trigger it accidentally etc the smash attack can also be performed by boosting and primary fire or primary fire and boosting or both or both in a key or both in two keys i don't know if you want to smash you can bind up to four different things to that the Kodachi gunship is equipped with a rear view camera, which can be engaged with this button. It's helpful. Um, some of you may remember the uh, the ability to assign rear view cameras to the bottom of your rendering window in Descent 1, 2, and 3. That is not present here. It's, it's a real bear in unity to get it going apparently so that's that's about it same with the the missile tracking camera thing previous primary and secondary are the inverse of switch primary and secondary these these two controls will cycle you forward through the lineup of primary and secondary weapons and then these two should you choose to bind them will move you back through the list slide modifiers are pretty helpful um, if you hit whatever button this is assigned to and move your mouse, typically, at least I think it's the mouse, it will undo anything that the mouse is currently assigned to in that previous menu. So for me, it's turn and pitch, and it will instead give you slide control. It's pretty handy, um, especially if you're a keyboard-only player. It's, it's helpful if you still have the mouse used for fine-tuning your aim or, you know, I don't know other things. Maybe you have W bound to this and just keep using your mouse to slide and turn and all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't know. Quick save, very helpful to have bound. I don't know why I don't have it bound. Uh, toggling the cockpit, you can turn the cockpit on and off with this button instead of going through the menus, it's great. You can also fly blind. You can turn the entire HUD off by pressing this key. It's really cool to do challenge mode runs without a HUD. It's scary, honestly. For VR players, I kind of know what this does. It just sort of like takes the current position of the of the headset and then that's the new center of it. So it's good to have that bound. If you've got one of those fancy VR headsets, send me one if you've got an extra. These are all of your weapons. Instead of individual ones, this may have changed, don't sue me. Um, there are categories of weapons. 
Every weapon is in a bucket. You've got four primaries, four secondaries. Probably a good idea to have these all pretty easily within reach, but if you like the one through eight thing, go for it. So, so primary one, two is impulse and cyclone. Primary three and four are reflex and crusher. Five, six are driller flak or flak driller, I forget which. Seven, eight are thunderbolt and Lancer, which we've just found out about in the multiplayer beta. Secondary 1-2 are Falcon Missile Pod. Secondary 3-4 are Hunter Creeper. Secondary 5-6 are Nova Devastator. 7-8 are Time Bomb and Vortex. So it's pretty important to, to know those. If you don't know them right off the bat, that's fine. But it is very important that you know that all of these... These these are key to know that it's like, okay, so I want the Cyclone, I gotta hit one twice. It's a little counterintuitive at first, but once you have it all memorized, it's like, oh, Cyclone, 1-1. One, one. Or, you know, the Missile Pods, 5-5. Five, five. Stuff like that. You can also work through radial menus using the arrow keys or whatever you have bound to whatever. So, the Guidebot menu, as I mentioned, this is pretty critical. If you hold this down, it comes up with radio menu if you use the arrow keys on my machine uh you can you know work your way around through it so that'll about cover it in this thanks for tuning in i know it's a lot but now that we're through that we can go through some of the the more advanced concepts in controlling your ship um but with what you have now in these two videos you should be able to fly through at least a couple of challenge mode matches, most of the main campaign, if not all of the main campaign, the entire training thing, and a couple of matches of multiplayer. You've got all the tools you need to succeed. I wish you the very best. I'm excited to see you in multiplayer matches and climbing the challenge mode leaderboards very, very soon. Uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to comment on this video or check out the Overload Discord. The link is again in the description. Please go check it out. But yeah, see you in the mines.